Today we're going to cover section 7. Today we're going to learn how to find the surface area and volume of cones. So first thing we're going to do is identify the different parts of the cone. Just like before with the pyramid, we've got two different heights going on here. We actually have the actual height of the cone and then we have the slant height. The height of the cone will be used in the volume formula. The slant height will be used in the surface area formula. And again, the base shape on a cone is always a circle, so the base area will be pi r squared, and then we'll have the lateral area, um, which again is developed from the area of the sector equation. Next one has the formulas. So the lateral area of a cone, you're just going to memorize that that is pi times the radius times the slant height. Again, they've developed this formula because if you notice that lateral area is just part of a circle, so they're using the area of the sector formula in order to come up with that equation. The surface area, again, it's going to be the base area, which is the circle, pi r squared, plus this lateral area, which is pi r l. Again, that l is the slant height. That's like a italics lowercase letter L. Next we have the volume formula. And again, just like the pyramid, it's one third area of the base times the height. And again, when it's a cone, it's pi r squared. So it's very similar to the cylinder. Remember the cylinder was just pi r squared height. Now the cone is the same. It's just multiplied by one third or divided by three. And again, that capital B is the area of the base, and the base is a circle. And now we're just going to do examples using the formulas. All right, so example one, they want us to find the area of the base, the lateral area, the surface area, and the volume. Remember, the shape of the base of a cone is always a circle. So we're going to be doing pi r squared. Now, let me label my picture. In the picture, the five, this is the radius. The eight is the slant height. Notice for volume, I need to find the height of the cone. To find the height of the cone, I'm going to be doing Pythagorean theorem. So h squared plus five squared equals eight squared. 25. 64, subtract 25, h squared equals 39. I need to square root the 39. There aren't any perfect squares in it, so I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 39. This will be the height that I'm going to be using in the volume formula. Yes? Again, my radius is 5, so this is just going to be pi times 5 squared, so left in terms of pi, it's 25 pi. Using the pi button, 78.54, and these are both meters squared. For the lateral area, we're using the formula pi times radius times the slant height, so pi rl. Plug in our three numbers, so pi, radius is 5, Slant height is 8, so in terms of pi, it's 40 pi. Using the pi button, I get 125.66, and again, these are still meters squared. For the surface area, or the total area, remember we're using the base area plus the lateral area, but it's just a formula you memorize, so it's pi r squared for the base. Lateral area is pi r l. We already calculated everything right above there. The base area was 25 pi. The lateral area was 40 pi. Added together, 65 pi. Using the pi button, 204.20, and still meters squared. For the volume, 
that formula, one third, capital BH, but remember that capital B is the circle, so it's really one third pi r squared height, but remember we already did the capital B, and that was 25 pi. The height we calculated, that was the square root of 39, and then we had the one third here in the front. This one, I'm just gonna go ahead and multiply it and round it to the hundreds place because I've got that radical in my answer here. So 163.49 and volume is meters cubed. So for example two, we're doing exactly the same thing, the same four things. Only difference is this 24 is a diameter. So we're gonna divide it by two and make it a radius. Notice again, I'm not given the height, so I have to do Pythagorean theorem again to find the height because I've got 12 here. So I'm gonna do h squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. This is a triple. h squared plus 144 equals 169. Subtract the 144 h squared equals 25, square root it, and the height is gonna be five, and these are meters. Now that I have all the pieces I need for all the formulas, I'm just gonna plug them in. So again, the area of a base in a cone is always a circle, so pi r squared. My radius is 12, so pi times 12 squared is 144 pi. Using the pi button, you should get 452.39, and these are meters squared. For the lateral area, we're using the formula pi RL, and we have both the radius and the slant height, so pi times 12 times 13, I get 156 pi, Using the pi button, I get 490.09 meters squared. For the surface area or the total area, remember that's the area of the base plus the lateral area, or again, you can just memorize it as pi r squared plus pi r l in case you haven't already done it ahead of time like we did. Since we already did it ahead of time, area of the base is the 144 pi. Lateral area was the 156 pi. Add them together, I get 300 pi. Using the pi button, I get 942.48 meters squared. And for the pi, you still put meters squared? Correct. Yeah, so both of the answers, whether it's in terms of pi or using the pi button, yes, the units are the same. And then lastly, the volume formula, one-third BH. And again, that base shape is a circle. We've already calculated the B up at the beginning in part A. So all I have to do is one-third times 144 pi, which is the area of the base, times the height which we calculated to be a five. Once I multiply this, I get 240 pi. And again, meters cubed, but then if you use the pi button, 753.98 meters cubed. So it says that cones A and B are similar. It gave us the volume of cone A. It wants us to find the volume of cone B. First thing I need to do is find the scale factor, which is my K. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go ahead and do the radius. And again, you don't, it doesn't matter if you do A over B or B over A, just stay consistent. So the radius of A is three, radius of B is nine, I'll reduce that to one third. That's my K value. 
but remember for volume, we use k cubed. So I have to take one third and I need to cube it. This is gonna be the ratio that I'm gonna use in my proportion. So then now remember you're gonna take volume of A over volume of B and it's gonna equal the K cubed. So volume of A was 15 pi. Yes. I'm sorry, what do you do with the Now I'm gonna do 15 pi over X. I'm gonna call volume B X and then equals one over 27. I'm gonna cross multiply and I get 405 pi. So left in terms of pi, the volume of cone B is 405 pi. Using your pi button, 1,272.35 feet cubed. So either answer here would be acceptable, depending on the instructions. All right, last example, find the volume of the composite solid. So to find the volume, we're gonna do the cylinder volume plus the cone volume. So for the volume of the composite, we're gonna add the volume of the cylinder plus the volume of the cone. And remember the formula for volume of a cylinder. Again, remember volume of anything, it's supposed to be BH, and then this one's one third BH, but the base shape on both are circles. So the formula is pi r squared times height, and then this one's one third pi r squared times height. Notice we have two different H values here. So I'm gonna say the 10, this is gonna be H1, because that's the height of the cylinder, and then the height of the cone, I'll call this H sub two. The radius is the same for both the cone and the cylinder. So let's just fill in the numbers. Pi times three squared times the height of the cylinder, which is 10, plus one third pi times three squared times the height of the cone, which is five. Once I multiply pi times three squared, which is nine times 10 is 90 pi. And then over here, one third times pi times nine times five gives me 15 pi. Add them together. 105 pi centimeters cubed is left in terms of pi, but if I use my pi button, I would get 329.87 centimeters cubed.